Tamil Nadu Agricultural University at Coimbatore has been carrying out work on biological pest suppression in the Department of Agricultural Entomology at Center for Anthropology. The biological pest suppression is the utilization of the natural enemies of the insects. This is the ecologically sound method of pest management, which helps to minimize the hazards caused by the indiscriminate use of pesticides. The various agents used in biological pest suppression include the pathogens, the pesticides, and dangers. According to the pathogens, the pathogens are available for important polyphagous pests like Heliotis armigera, Modapta litura, as well as the change borer Kylo in Fuscatulus. Spodoptera litura is a polyphagous pest. It feeds on many crops like tobacco, then castor, and many other important plants. It causes severe damage, and the life stage of the insect consists of the adult, the egg, the larvae, which are the damaging stages, and the pupae. In the case of the Heliot Omegera, this is also another important polyphagous pest. This causes damage on many important crops like tree, tomato, cotton, and several other important crops. The damage or is very severe. The fruiting bodies are affected. The yield is directly reduced because of the damage of this pest. In the case of the sugarcane shoot border, Kalon Stellus, the damage is seen on shoots the sugarcane, which reduces the yield as well as the recovery of sugar at the factory level. This is being done at Tamil Nadu Agricultural University, Coimbatore, to more culture these three important pests. For culture of Spodoptera litera, castor leaves, the preferred host plant, the Italy. The larvae are allowed to feed on the castor leaves. In the initial stages, they skeletonize the leaves and later on they make the holes on the leaves by feeding. And the entire life cycle of larvae is completed on the leaf. Then the pupae are collected and they are kept for the emergence of the moths. And this continuous culture of the insect is maintained so that the virus dragon can be taken up. In the case of the another important pest, namely Helixis argyra, the insect is rare on a semi-synthetic diet. This semi-synthetic diet consists of the Bangor gum floor, the material, which is enriched with other ingredients like the yeast tablets, vitamin tablets, ascorbic acid, and a solidifying agent like agar agar. These ingredients are mixed together, they are prepared aesthetically and medially utilized for rarity. Whereas in the case of Sopira litera, larvae can be rarely dispersed in one container. In the case of Heliotis armigera, because they are cannibalistic in nature, they have to be rarely in individual containers or individual small penicillin or glass vials. The continuous rearing of the insect are maintained and the culture is utilized for virus production. In the case of sugarcane shoot borer, sugarcane shoots have to be utilized for firing the insect. The larvae are collected from the feed. They are allowed to feed on the sugarcane bits and they are rare up to the adult stage. In this insect, so far no synthetic diet has been called. So necessarily it has to be rare on the sugarcane bits. And for rearing these, we have done some basic research and we have found out the methodologies for the continuous supply of the culture in the laboratory. The rared insects are kept in a separate laboratory away from the place where virus production is taking place. Because if both are combined together, there will be contamination and the culture may be infected. The production of the virus involves the continuous supply of the larvae. The larvae are utilized for the mass production of the virus culture. The larvae are taken to the virus production unit in the diet, either the semi-synthetic diet 
or the host plant itself. In the case of Podoptera litura, the cassar leaves are treated with virus suspension. Then the larvae are allowed to feed on the virus suspension and the inoculum is thus given to the caterpillars. And in the case of the Heliotis armigera, oral feeding is done with virus suspension. The larvae are allowed in the semi-synthetic diet. It may take about four to five days for the virus symptoms to be expressed. In about eight days, the larvae start dying and these virus larvae are collected in a conical flask or container containing water. The larvae are allowed to putrefy in the water. The body particle disintegrate, liberating the polyhedra. The polyhedra thus liberated and the suspension is passed through a muslin cloth. Body particles are retained on cloth and the virus suspension will be suspended and collected in another container. And this suspension is centrifuged at low speed as well as the high speed and then the pure virus suspension is obtained. Pure virus suspension which will be clear in clear and it can be seen as a suspension on the part of the container. Such clean virus suspension can be stored in the refrigerator for many years. Regarding the GV also, the same procedure is followed and the virus is stored in the refrigerator. And these viruses are utilized for the management of the pest. For example, in the case of Heliotis armigera, for the control of this pest on chickpea, 250 larval equivalents have been utilized per hectare as spray for the control of the insect. One larval equivalent is normally the virus that is obtained from three virus larvae. Similarly, in the case of Podoptera and GV, the virus suspensions prepared and they are preferably sprayed in the evening hours to avoid the effect of UV factor in the sunlight because UV infects the virus. Next, regarding the parasitoids. The parasitoids are beneficial organisms. The important parasitoids that are being cultured at Tamil Nadu Agricultural University, Coimbatore, are the egg parasitoid, trichogramma, which parasitize the eggs of the host insects. Then the egg larval parasitoid, that is, the parasite lays the eggs on the egg of the host insects, and then development is continued in larval stage of the host insect. One important parasite of this category is the Chelonus. Then we have the larval parasite which affects the larvae. For example, Eriborus procantaratus, which is a parasite on the larvae of Nephantis serinopa or Officina rinocella, which is an important pest on coconuts. Then we have another parasitoid on larvae, the goniosis on the same host insect, Cina anocella. Regarding the parasitoids that are found on the pupae, Trichospilus is an important parasitoid which is also found on the pupae of the caterpillar. From one single pupa, hundreds of parasitoids will emerge. Here an example of the pupal parasite is the Tetastychus, again a parasitoid on the coconut, uh, uh, coconut Nephantis. These parasites are important disruption of the many of the pests. Extensive work is being carried out at the Tamil Nadu Agricultural University, the Department of Agricultural Entomology, on mass culture of trichogramma, the egg parasitoid. For the culturing of trichogramma, the laboratory host insect is the right moth, Corsaira salonica. Corsaira cephalonica is reared on a base medium consisting of kabu grains or bajra grain. 2.5 kilos of kambu or the bajra grains are in a tray or plastic basin. They are enriched with 
that of niacin sulfate, yeast, and sulfur. In this mixture, the eggs of Corsaira are introduced and the larval development takes place in the medium. Then they pupate in medium itself and the adults develop. These adult moths are collected either manually or through the vacuum suction. And the collected moths allowed into the mating drum and after mating they start laying eggs in the mating drum itself. The eggs are collected and the collected eggs are placed on paper boards, paper strips with them. And these eggs are utilized for the trichogramma culture. The eggs are charged with the trichogramma and the parasite lays the eggs on the eggs of the host insect, namely Corsaira. The healthy Corsaira eggs will be pale cream in color, whereas the parasitized eggs will be blackened. So by knowing this blackening, we can understand that the parasitization has taken place. The parasitized eggs are put in a polythene bag, and these polythene bags are taken to the seed for field release. This egg parasitoid is dried in sugarcane internode borer. Eggs are released at 15 days interval and six releases are totally made with 2.5 cc of eggs per release. That means for treating one hectare we require totally 15 cc of eggs for the entire period. Then the other important parasitoids like the Chelonus, Eriboros, Goniosis, Trichospilus and Tetrasticus are also maintained in the laboratory and they are also utilized for pest suppression. Regarding the predators, predators are insects which devour many number of prey insects at a time to complete their life cycle. The important predator maintained at industry, the Department of Agricultural Entomology is the Chrysopus, the green lace wing, or the aphid lion. This is a predator on the eggs as well as the young Lepidopteran larvae. This is fairly sturdy in nature and the insect is being cultured in laboratory by two methods. The larval rare is done with the help of the Corsaira eggs as the feeding material. They are reared in single cells. Each cell will contain of eggs of the prey insect, namely Corsaira eggs, as well as the grub. The grub starts feeding on these eggs and the entire development is completed in the single cell itself. Another method of rearing is the utilization of a trough in which many grubs are allowed and a large quantity of eggs is utilized. But due to cannibalism in this method, the percentage of recovery will be less. The adults are rad either in individual containers or in glass traps. The adults are acquired with a food material consisting of protein X, honey and butter. This food material is quite essential and increases the longevity of the adults. And the mated adults lay the eggs on the brown paper strips that are provided in the containers. These eggs are stocked in nature. These eggs are utilized for further rearing of the grubs as well as the adults. Chrysopa is being tested for the many insects 
especially the heliotis and other boll worms on cotton heliotis eggs on groundnut and sorghum this insect seems to be hardy in nature it is able to survive well in even difficult agroclimatic situations another important predator that is being maintained is the coccinellid beetle cryptolemus montresori cryptolemus montresori is an effective predator on the mealybugs that occur on many crops like grapevine brinjal cotton ornamental plants etc the grubs and the adults of this beetle feeds on the mealybugs and they are able to keep the mealybug in check the beetle and the grubs are reared on pumpkin in the laboratory on the pumpkin the mealybugs are reared which is extensively colonized on the pumpkin surface and then the cryptolemus grubs and the adults are reared on this then we have another group of uh, organisms namely the spiders which are very very important in the rice ecosystem especially the spider lycosa pseudo annulata is an effective predator on the plant hoppers as well as the leaf hoppers the spiders feed on these insects and cause considerable reduction in the population and when the spiders are present in the ecosystem even the spraying can be delayed because by nature they are able to cause lot of damage and consume many number of the insects regarding the maintenance of these cultures it has to be maintained in a pure form it has to be maintained and utilized for further utilization under the department of biotechnology scheme an estimated target area of several acres in farmers fields has been identified for example for the heliotis armidira 1250 hectares will covered for spodopter lita 1550 hectares will be covered for gv of kylo 400 hectares will be covered and for trichogramma and rhizo 1750 hectares will be covered in farmers fields Thank <laughs> you.